Hi there, I'm Aussie Villain. Welcome to what is going to be a quick tutorial for preseason. Uh, just letting you know how to how to basically set up preseason. Now this is with my Central Coast Mariners save. It's an Australian A League club, one of the smaller teams in the league. Now we want to start by going to tactics. Now whether it's your first preseason in the game at the club or whether you've done multiple seasons already, you want to have your squad set up in, uh, for the for the tactics and how you want to play for the year. Now you'll see here um, I've had a few injury problems, um, so ignore ignore sort of the, the player positioning a little bit here, uh, just for the sake of example, you can see here, and I wish I'd done this a little bit earlier in preseason, but you can see we are getting a little bit better accomplished fluid uh, in most of the categories now. Now that's come through some friendlies, uh, which we'll get to in a second, and training as well, which again we'll get to in a second. Now I'm going to do a different, or a separate tactics tutorial that will run through the tactics, so if you haven't seen that already, check that out. But we'll just kind of do the basics here. If we were to set up a new tactic to kind of get the idea of what we'd be going for, let's go with, say, Gagan Press, because that's different. And you'll see the player familiarity here, look at that, it drops right down. It's, it's a competent and it's awkward um, for, for the most part. And then again, if you look over here at the player familiarity, uh, again, awkward. It's awkwards all around um, on that front. Now what you want to do is, is by setting up the tactic early and then using it in preseason friendlies and, and as a training tactic as well, well, the players will get used to it. They'll get used to everything about it and you'll see they'll go from something like this to more like, like this where they're getting more used to the roles um, and, and that's how obviously you'll play better as a team. Um, now the other thing that you would want to do uh, with tactics is go over to training and you'll see here again, the familiarity with the training is, is right there for you. Now, what you can do is, if you go to edit uh, the training calendar, we're into late preseason here, you'll see basically this is the training that you're going to do. Now again, we'll do a separate uh, training tutorial. Um, now, I've found that just setting up the, the sort of the default uh, templates here, that works okay, and it is, as you can see, uh, it's got, got my team getting more familiar with the roles. But you might say, say you're trying to tro uh, play possession football, which is what, for the most part, I've been trying to do. Um, if you go down to technical here and possession's a problem, you could use either ball distribution or perhaps ball retention, um, depending on what part of the possession is is the problem. Um, you could work on that specifically, and it will just and it will help uh, improve that. So use use the training uh, overview here, the the familiarity uh, tab there, and what it, what it brings up to show you what what part of the game, what part of the, the formation it is that the team is struggling with. This doesn't want to come up for me now, does it? Um, come on, there we go. So use that as a sort of a guide as to what part of of your game that you need to improve, and don't be afraid too. Listen to your players, listen to your coaches. You can see here there's some unhappy players with training. Uh, they want to do more technical passing possession. It looks like there's no uh, there's no two players that have the same concern, so that's helpful, isn't it? But you might find a situation where two, three more players want to do a specific sort of training. Listen to them. You know, don't be afraid to do that. And the coaches will give you similar feedback as well. Um, so don't be afraid to listen to your players and coaches and let them guide as well uh, where training is going and how to improve. Now the next thing, it's just a quick a quick thing, but definitely worth doing, is go to your staff screen and make sure that you have a full allocation of staff. The board give you, you know, uh, they tell you what you can have. You might as well take what you've got, what you can get, right? Now you can see here, I'm still a coach short um, on the coaching staff. With them just still working on exactly what I need to, to bring in there to, for the benefit uh, of the club overall. Um, but yeah, make sure you have your coaches, scouts. Make sure you have your scouts. There'll be, again, a separate tutorial on scouting. Um, but they are absolutely crucial uh, for improving your team long term because that's where you're going to find your players. So make sure you have your scouts maxed out. Same with the medical stuff. You know, the more physios, the more sports scientists you have, um, less injuries you're going to get. So it's definitely worthwhile doing. And it's easy enough over the off season to have a contract run out of a backroom staff member and just not notice. It happens to me all the time. So just uh, check in at the start of preseason. Just make sure that uh, you have a full allocation of staff. And then finally, it's what preseason is famous for, the friendlies. Um, now, the uh, so friendlies can be a really, really good source of income, now, especially for, for any club. But if you're a club that is a little bit cash-strapped, really good opportunity to make some cash playing uh, playing some friendlies because it's the only ch chance you could you know, end up playing someone. If you are, say, Rochdale, you've actually got a decent chance of getting a friendly against, say, a Manchester United, whereas you, know, you're not, it's, it's, you can make more money there than you'll make uh, for most of the season. So what you want to do is just go to arrange friendlies here. Um, now this is, again, this is an A-League team, a smaller A-League team, so it's limited uh, in, in the friendlies we can organise. And also, A-League season starting so late, it's late September now, so our international options are very, very limited. So if we were to go, say, APL Leichhardt Tigers here, um, 
there's two options. You can play at home or away. Now you can see here that the, the fee that they would want is just under four grand. The income we would get is about twelve grand. Um, and they get just important to remember that's the estimated revenue. So it's don't don't so take it to the bank. Um, but it usually gives you a pretty good idea. So that's if we were to play at home. Now if we were to play away, the same game you can see we'd only get just earn two and a half grand. So it's definitely worthwhile checking that because the reason that I would suspect is that Central Coast Mariners have a bigger stadium, so therefore more people would be likely to come and watch. Um, and so that's why we would make more money playing this game at home than we would away. But if we were, for example, set up a game against, again, just using it for an example, Manchester United, if we were to play that uh, at Old Trafford, we would probably make more money. You'd, now, whether the board would want to allow you to travel that far, and that's something to take into account when you're arranging foreign friendlies, is you won't always be allowed to travel just anywhere to go and play a friendly. Um, but if we were to, if you're playing a team, even say, for example, because they're in Asia, if you were to be playing a big uh, Japanese or Chinese club, um, their stadium is likely bigger, so you might be better off going there and depending what sort of fee they'll charge. Or if you're a low-reputation club like Central Coast is, um, you may not actually command a big enough fee and you might actually be better off hosting a game like that. But then again, the fee that you have of the, of the big Chinese club might actually undo any, any benefit of the income. So it is a bit of a playing game, um, but do it is worth playing around with because you can make a nice chunk of change um, ready for the season ahead by arranging the right friendlies. You can let your assistant do it as well, which saves a little bit of time. And to be honest, sometimes I just do that as well because I can't be bothered. Um, but you can get some rewards from organizing your own friendlies. Now, in terms of how many friendlies you should play, what I usually do um, is I try and play over four weeks, eight games. So eight friendlies. Now, the way I'd usually work that, now this is a little bit different because in the Australian League, the FA Cup is played during pre-season. So you have some competitive games here and there. It becomes a little bit messy. But this is my first league game here. So what I would typically do, that's a Sunday. So say the Saturday before, uh, I'd arrange my last friendly. And then Saturday, Wednesday for four weeks. Um, and that way you're... you're you should have enough games then to get everybody up to match fitness, uh, play around with your squad, get let you know, decide if you want players to come or go. Um, I find that's a good amount of, of games. You're not playing too many, but you're also not playing too few. Now, when it comes to playing the friendlies, we'll just go back to tactics here. What you want to do is you don't necessarily want to play your best team all the time because, and you hear the manager say this all the time in preseason, results don't matter. Um, you know, they can be happy with the performance, they can be happy that you know with fitness, things like that. So, I mean, that's what you want to do. Winning is always nice. You do want to win if you can, but don't get hung up on playing your best eleven the whole time. Now. You'll notice here that most of my squad, the match sharpness, it's it's pretty good. It's right up there. Um, in the beginning of preseason, that's not always the case. Some players will come back with match sharpness if they've had an international tournament, or if you've you know signed them from a league that's that runs a sort of a weird calendar, they may come in ready to go. But often you'll find players. This is my youth team here. They haven't played any games yet, so you'll see that match sharpness is right down there. So what you want to do in preseason is try and get everybody's match sharpness up as high as you can. Um, so that's going to mean sometimes not playing your best players uh, in their best positions or sometimes not even playing them at all. So do try and make sure that, that you're giving everybody a go in preseason. You might discover that someone is actually a lot better than, than you thought they would be. Their, their match rating or their potential rating or their, their star rating, uh, which can be misleading and that's something that uh, I'll go into in the uh, probably in the transfer scouting um, uh, uh, tutorial. You might find a player that is only, a, say, a two, three-star player, but actually fits into a role really, really well. Uh, I've had a number of, of times where my best player in the team has been a three-star player because they just fit the role perfectly. Um, they're not necessarily overall a, a, a five-star player, but for me, they've, they've sort of proved into or turned into that. Um, another thing you might want to do is is try different players in different roles. Um, this has just become a bit of a mess here now, hasn't it, with the <laughs> players? Um, so you might have, say, Gribben and O'Neill here as advanced playmaker and box-to-box and -box midfielder. You might want to change that around. You might want to try, say, a Mazala and try Gribben as, and this is a bad example because he can't play there, but say he was a deep-line playmaker. Maybe that as, as a duo, as a, as a different roles, that might work really, really well. So don't be afraid to sort of put different players in different roles because it can really, really change the way the team plays, um, obviously, but, but you know, even more so than you would think. Just having, especially in midfield, you know, a Mazala can drift wide and it can block off your winger. So maybe that doesn't work. Or that maybe if you have your winger going inside, your Mazala going out... Try things because it can really, really just such small thing as changing player roles can make a big difference in the way that your team plays. So, yeah, so don't be don't be afraid to experiment. Um, Preseason, it is all about it's about getting your match fitness. It's about experimentation, and um, it's 
trying like trying players in different roles, making sure everybody is is uh, is is fit. So don't get hung up on results and don't get caught playing your strongest team every week. So guys, that's it. I uh, hope that has been helpful. If it has been, do make sure you hit like uh, and of course subscribe if you're new as well. Um, so you can and make sure you hit the bell as well so you see when I upload new videos. As I said, there will be other tutorials and some Let's Plays as well. So if you want to see me in action, so to speak, uh, make sure you check those out as well. But until next time, I've been Aussie Bill and thank you so much for watching. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.